Chuck Mock everyone, welcome back to another Macro World video. And today we're going to talk about the results from our previous videos about the Sony 90mm 2.8, 50mm 2.8, and the 30mm 3.5 APS-C lens. In my opinion, the winner is this one. I want to do another test. So over here I have the Meek mic. I don't know what it's really called. It's a weird name. But basically this adapter converts any lens into a macro lens. So I want to see, will this be able to compete with a dedicated prime macro lens? So my testing lens will be the Sigma 2472.8. Let's give it a try. Of course, there is two adapters. So I'm going to test both of them and each individual. See which one give me the best result. And that's the one that I'm going to be sharing with you. Lens got a little bit bigger. Now I have a zoom lens with, with macro. So we got to the point in the video that I have to choose one, which one I would recommend. And to be honest, it's a lot harder than what I thought because each one of them have their strengths and their weaknesses. And I'm going to explain what they are and then I will let you know which one I would get and why. So first of all, the adapters, they're very cheap. So it's 25 bucks to convert any lens you have into a macro lens. So it's good to have something on the budget. If you want to just have some fun, that's good. It's not going to get you as close as a dedicated macro lens. So keep that in mind. And it depends on the type of lens that you connect it to it. But it's a good way to have some macro shots without breaking your back. So the downside of the adapter, it's once you connect it to the lens, that lens becomes a dedicated macro lens. So it can only shoot macro. So if you're shooting macro with the adapter on and you want to take a portrait or take a picture of someone, you will not be able to do that because that lens will become macro only. So if you want to do that, you'll have to take it out and attach it from the lens, connect the lens again, and then use the lens as normal. So it's a time consumer. It's not great for projects, but it's good for fun. The next one we have, it's the silver lens, the 30 3.5. It's super sharp and it gets closer than the other two. And of course the adapter. Who is it good for? Of course, anyone with a crop sensor camera. So if you have a ZV-E10, uh, one of the 6000 series, FX30, that's a great lens for all of those. And it's also good if you have one of the following. Sony A7R4, Sony A7R5, and Sony A1. Since you have a huge megapixel, you can afford to use it on the APS-C mode, which is on the Sony A7R5. It's going to give me 26 megapixel, which is more than the APS-C cameras that they have which is 24 megapixel it's more than my sony a7 III, which is 24 megapixel so i can still get more out of it on my full frame and it's a 300 dollar the next one it's the 50 millimeter 2.8 to be honest i did not expect this lens to perform this way it's super slow get as close as the 9mm 2.8 have the same features, autofocus manual control button instead of the focus ring. You have limited focusing areas, super small. The barrel goes out and in, and that's one of the downside because it's really slow once it goes out and in and it hunts when it's focusing. So it's not as fast as the other ones. If you need a full frame macro lens, and you have no other options, you don't have a Sony a7R5, you can't afford to crop the images, then maybe. But I would still save a little bit more money, get a used one or renewed for like $800. It's still a better option. I will not recommend this one to anyone. And the last one is the 90 millimeter 2.8. Just saying 2.8 means a lot of light. It's a little bit heavier than the other ones. So that's one of the downsides it's very expensive two times the 50 millimeter and like three times the 30 millimeter but it's a full frame so on sony a7r5 it'll give you 61 megapixel of a macro with the fox bracketing you'll get an amazing shot this is one of the lenses that i used to shoot weddings with 
like I said, one of the lenses, not the only lens, because it's a great portrait lens and it's a great to get that detailed macro shot. And it's also great for shooting bugs because you don't have to be that close to the bug, not like this one, because for this one to get that close, it's a 30 millimeter. So you'll need to be that close to take the picture to get it. While on this one, well, you can be at this far. And that's a huge difference when shooting bugs because they get scared easily. So if I have to choose one lens from these three, in my opinion, the winner is this one. Believe it or not, I did not expect me to like this lens. It's silver, it's 30, 3.5. I didn't expect it to perform this good, but it gets closer than both of them. It's faster autofocus, it's cheaper, and it's lighter. So when look at it this way, it's definitely the winner. And combined with the A7R5, I'm not losing much. So let me know in the comments, what do you think? Which one you prefer to have? Will you save more money and get the 90? Or are you fine with a slower autofocus and get the 50? Or maybe you're not in a hurry and just get an adapter. Let me know in the comments, what do you think? I hope you guys liked the video. If you enjoyed it, if you learned something, maybe give me a thumbs up or maybe subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you guys for watching. See you next one.